Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and I'm doing a little challenge today. I am challenging myself to learn how to paint some flowers very simply using some paint brushes and today I'm going to be using the Craft Amo Air Edition and um, they come in this nice little case which is, is kind of convenient which I, I do like and I've already painted this picture with them um, and I am using today some Winsor Newton paints and uh, this yeah, I actually bought used um, online so you don't have to buy brand new paints you can buy other people's older palettes and uh, so if you want to get a decent um, watercolor or something like that and I would say Winsor Newton's probably middle of the road um, uh, watercolor you can totally paint with inexpensive watercolors regular watercolors fancy watercolors it doesn't matter. It's all good. You can make simple flowers no matter what. And uh, the whole concept behind uh, this little painting was just to use one or two colors, sometimes separate, sometimes blended together. But um, do in doing so, uh, only using the brush shapes to make the flowers as opposed to trying to create the flowers. You know, basically, you don't have to be an artist to paint uh, flowers. So I wanted to expand that a little bit more so you can see the different kinds of... Oh, let me come down to you the different kinds of shapes and patterns that you can get just using the brushes themselves. And wh why? Why am I showing you this related to junk journals? Well, these little items can be tucked into junk, junk journals. You can also cut them into tags or pockets or turn them into cards and tuck them into your junk journals. Um, and you can also sign them because they're hand painted, which is kind of cool. And uh, it's a little personalization, a little piece of you inside the junk journal that you might be giving to somebody else. Um, anyway, it's a, also a fun way to uh, practice a different art form. Remember, all different art forms can come in to and blend into junk journals which is wonderful and uh, I've missed painting I used to paint a lot and uh, sometimes I, I love to start when I want to get my mind going and rolling with easier um, techniques because it allows freedom and play to come in so what I am using this is the paper I'm using today but you can use any watercolor paper or you know any even a cardstock or something but watercolor paper is actually designed to receive and soak and saturate and with water and um, it's, it's a very handy uh, type of paper. Now you don't have to spend a lot on your watercolor paper. Uh, you can go to Walmart and get watercolor paper. You can buy it online, all sorts of different kinds. Um, this one protect, uh, happens to be a hot press, which basically means a smoother uh, surface as opposed to the cold press. And I'm um, just gonna keep it simple and easy breezy with you guys. And let's just play. Let's just play and see what happens. This is a watercolor block that has the papers glued do down on either side. And when you're done, you can come along and just slide a butter knife and remove it that way. Um, the nice thing about the block is it holds your paper flat so it doesn't curl up on you as the paper gets wet, which is very convenient. Okay, so um, what I did was I just grabbed some brushes. And the nice thing about this set is they have a lot of variety in each uh, for in one set, which is kind of nice. And um, um, so basically just grab a brush, any brush that uh, floats your boat initially. And um, let's try this one. I think I may have, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're all good brushes um, and they're all numbered and that can help you distinguish the brushes, but it really doesn't matter. Just grab a brush, especially if you've never done anything like this before. And let's see what we can make with um, very little effort. Um, and just using the shape of the brush. This is a number seven, number seven, this is, I believe is a round brush. And I'm no um, uh, watercolor painting expert, but I do love to play with watercolor and I wanna see the fun things that I can do with it for uh, my junk journals. So here we go, I'm just, uh, I'm, I was using blue and purple. Uh, so let's use a little bit of that. Here's some purple, wet your brush. And the thing about it is you don't want to soak the shaft of the brush in the water for long periods of time you want to remove it so it doesn't crack on you um, so basically always remove your water or brushes from the water when you're done okay I'm gonna use a little stronger blue on this one side I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of paint there to play with okay so now I'm gonna let the shape of the brush design design the flower that we're gonna make and there's two shapes I see on a brush there's probably a thousand but there's two shapes I see there's the long shape and then there's the pinpoint. So let's say if we just work with the long shape, um, when we just press it down and pull back, 
we actually have one thing that can look like a petal. Um, maybe we can we can do a classic looking straight at you type of flower. Or we can do a flower from the side. Uh, so this I would call maybe a flower from the side. And maybe I just want to give him a little stem. I'm not going to change brushes for the stem. I'm just going to keep it simple. Maybe just bring him to a little point and then bring him down. Sometimes um, stems get fatter near the bottom. Sometimes they don't. Just depends on where, um, where you see the stem. So rinse in the clean water, then in, uh, no. rinse in the dirty water first, then in the clean water, then dab your brush on a, a napkin or a paper towel or something and go reload. Okay, so let, maybe let's see, let's do an en face one. Here's one. And, and the joy about watercolor is things don't have, let me zoom you in so you can see a little closer. Things don't have to be perfect. Um, allow the errors to or the imperfections, not the errors, the imperfections to become part of your art and um, just embrace that and don't fight it and just put some petals down and don't get too worried about it. Um, let's just see what it looks like. Give, give, give yourself a chance. Grab some paint. It can be very relaxing. Woo. Okay, so there's another flower. Okay, so far so good. Um, low pressure. The brush is doing all the work. I am merely laying the brush on the paper and then it becomes its own little flower. So we've done this one. So let's put that one aside and let's grab another brush. So you don't have to be um, a rocket scientist or, um, you know, Leonardo da Vinci to plant flowers. You can have a lot of fun. Oh, I know what I want to show you. The other end of the brush is the pinpoint. This particular round shape has a pinpoint on the end. So you can dip your uh, brush in the pinpoint and you can do some things with that and let's just just okay there's a lot on there let me put a there we go now we have a little pinpoint and you can actually do like a, a loose flower okay which is just made of dots okay there's one maybe there's a few of these over here very easy just using the brush to make the shape and I'm just going for a general ball you know you're your regularly regular ball, maybe three. We like threes in art for some reason, I guess. Makes the brain happy. So we want to keep the brain happy. You don't know what to do? Put three down. There you go. That's what you do. Um, uh, and then you can put uh, you can put little stems on these. Maybe these will come from the side. Maybe these will come from here. That's right. They can come from different directions. They don't all have to come from the same place. No, nope. nope, I'm running out of paint. So I go again, right into that one. Give this guy a little more color. Very easy to do. Anybody can do this. Uh, maybe this comes around like that. Okay. And you can paint right along with me if you want to create these. That might be fun. If you've got some paintbrushes sitting around. Um, grab them. Grab some different ones. See an ant on my paper. <laughs> okay, he's gone now. And um, you are not going to destroy my flow, Mr. Ant. No, you're not. Okay, what do we have next? I'm just going to take these as they come. This is an angle brush, number five. And um, let's see what this guy does. Now, this one, I think I'm going to add a little bit more purple to the paint just for fun to change it up a little bit. I'm going to use these two colors, the purple and the blue. They probably have fancy names. I don't know what they are. Doesn't matter to me. I just want to paint. All right. So let's try this. Um, let's put one mark down. Okay, so we have one mark. Now we can ask ourselves, where are we going to go with that? What are we going to do with that? Where will that take us? What, what things, grand things are going to happen? Will anything happen? Well, there's a lot of things we can do with this guy. And so just uh, try placing a few down in a cluster. Flowers often come in little, little petals can come in little irregular clusters. Okay, maybe there's another one here. Just using the brush shape to make the flower petals. Okay. Putting it down. Okay. Some here. Do, do, do. There we go. All right. Now this guy looks a little different than him, and that's okay. This one kind of looks that has that honeysuckle look. Um, that's what I tell myself. And 
Let's give you a little, let's cross you across. You're going to cross some of those, yes. And you, you're going to come down here, yes. All right, there we go. So now we've already got half a page done. Look at that. And, uh, okay, so let's rinse that out. Oh, let, we, we can also use the tip of this guy. Let's see what that looks like. Now he has an angled tip. See that? Um, which can also be seen as a blade on the end, almost like a knife blade. So if you dip the tip in, you can make a different kind of little flower. Let's try this. Okay, so we're going to... Do, do, do. I'm, do, I'm doing little lines. See, I can do little lines and get a flower going here. It's kind of cool, huh? Um, all right. Who knows what that is? Nobody. But it is my flower, and uh, I'm very happy with it. Very excited. Gonna fluff him out just a little bit, maybe fan him out a little bit more, just using his blade. And um, maybe he's a piece of a pussy willow or something like that. I don't know, doesn't matter, doesn't really matter. He's just a little flower. Maybe um, a weed, maybe um, goldenrod, something like that. I don't know. Um, so we can also do a uh, different kind of a stem for him too. He doesn't have to have the traditional kind of stem. No, no, there are no rules here because this is imagination land and you can make your flowers any way you like. So sometimes having different brushes can be an advantage. You can do a lot of things with one brush if you learn how to use it really well, but if you're just starting out, sometimes having a set of different brushes can be really helpful to give, let you launch yourself into uh, different patterns, different styles, different ways of making things. Here's a big paddle brush. This is a number 10 um, flat with rounded edges. Okay, so let's see where this one takes us. And maybe we're going to put even a little bit more purple. Whoop, look at that. We have a, a purple raindrop that has landed on the page. Not going to worry about it. Just going to leave it there because maybe we'll do a big sprinkle pattern at the end. That's always fun when you accidentally get a sprinkle on it. You just go with it and you sprinkle everywhere and it looks like pollen or rain or something like that. Okay, so let's do some of these. Let's do, let's do one this way and then one this way and then one this way. Now you could do one on FOSS, so let's do that. That's a nice way to start. If you never know where to start, you can always start with a flower facing you on FOSS. Um, I think that's like in the face, something like that. <laughs> so um, oh, my little water dish is in the way here. I'm gonna move everything so I can move my water dish. Okay, there you go. Okay. Ah! Okay, and you gotta be careful because you might drop your brush right on your artwork and then you work that into the design. That's right, that's what you do. Don't give up on your work. There we go. That's a pretty flower, right? And that, that was just the brush doing the work. I didn't do anything. You saw me. I just sat here and just turned that brush around. All right, here we go. There we go. Maybe we'll give him a little more. A little more there. There we are. Almost looks daffodilly. Not exactly. There's no central thing. I don't know what to do with the central thing. I'm just going to leave it be. I'm just going to let the paint do its thing. Let me bring the light down closer. Is that better? Is that better? Um... Okay, maybe more light, more light. Okay, I was trying to get more light here for some reason. Um, okay, so um, I like that. It gives kind of a nice central focus. And that's the paddle. So now we could do something maybe with the tip. Let's try that. Can, you can't see my paint anymore. Let me pull that back over here so you can see it. Okay, so I'm dipping in my paint. I'm going to go with the same ratio of purple to blue. And let's just, let's try and make something different with this. If I can work around my lights and my... Uh, my camera. Okay, how about uh, how about here? Well, we were there, so it, okay, this is a little different. See, now I'm working on the end, and I can get a completely different looking flower by working with the end of this brush. Um, and maybe this is almost like a little lavender or something. That's kind of a cute little lavender, isn't it? I've been wanting to do a lavender journal, and I think this would be a lot of fun to add some hand painted lavender into the journal. Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, these are such simple things that we can do. You don't have to be a super rocket artist. You can just do these things. And you're almost making a master board of flowers so that you can cut from it and take from it to use at any time in your journal, any way you like. So rinsing in the clean water, rinsing in the dirty water, and then dabbing on a uh, baby wipe I have just sitting here. Um, you want to see the baby wipe? Okay, there it is. You want to see the water? There it is. 
No, you can't see it. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. There it is. Okay, um, so let's draw some more flowers and let's see what we can do. Okay, so we use that brush. Let me put you over here for now. Next brush in line is this little skinny guy. Okay, now let me show you another technique you can do with a brush. This little skinny guy, you might say to yourself, hey, that little skin, let me put in a little more purple. I'm kind of going to go from blue to purple just across because I don't know, that just sounded like fun. Um, and um, you might think, well, maybe you want to do another... Um, uh, li uh, not lilac, another um, lavender because it's skinny and thin, which you can. But you can also do something like this. You can roll your brush. That's right. This also takes no talent, but it's easy to do. Just roll your brush. Okay, what is that? Nobody knows, but we're going to turn it into a flower. So let's put like a few of these down. Okay, some is coming from the, uh, the metal part and some of it is coming from the brush. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's all paint. It's all good. Um, do another one down here. Okay. And so we have four there. That's fine. And then we're going to use the tip of the brush um, to maybe what we're going to do is um, we are going to connect these as if they're all connected to some kind of central stem. Maybe it has little extra stems coming from it. Maybe here, and maybe he's just going to deal off to the side because he's really not sure about life and really doesn't know what direction he wants to go in. But I'm just going to sort of connect these lightly like that. Yeah, yeah, we don't really know what's going on in here other than there are some petals and flower coming from a central stem. So, there. That's just kind of like a weird little goofy flower just made by rolling the, uh, the brush. Give you a little bit of a different look. Okay, and um, next brush up is a bigger, wider angle brush. And one thing I do like about these, I, I tested them because um, I wanted to see if I like them, uh, but the hairs don't come out and that's really important. Um, if you ever buy cheap brushes and you give the, the brush uh, fibers a pull, they will come out and that causes like different uh, rough edges and things like that when you're trying to get an exact um, edge and that can be frustrating especially for a new artist and I know because I've been there because I'm pretty much a new artist so um, um, you're, you're coming on my, my journey with me and I, I hope you grab a paint brush and some paint and just have some fun so let's see what we can make out of this okay so did we do one with that yeah, yeah. yes we did the small angle so that must have been I think it was that guy so let's make some this is a larger angle but let's use the brush in one little different way let's let's see what we can do here okay so we have some purple I'm going to put maybe a little bit deeper blue in here, a little darker. I don't know. I'm changing. Okay. I'm not going from blue to purple. I'm changing it up. Um, okay. So now this time I am going to take a chance and rotate the flower. Yes. Um, maybe I'm going to do it here. I'm going to see what this happens. Okay. Well, first of all, instead of just laying it down, I'm going to start at the point end, put the point end down first, and then let the thing push and then pull away and I'm going to get a little thing that looks like a petal. Point in first, push and then pull away. Point in first, push and then pull away. And I'm getting a windmill design here. Point, push, pull away. Well, maybe one more over here. Point, push and pull away. Okay. So there I have more of a windmill flower design. So you see if you're looking across the page how many different flower shapes you can get out of just a, a simple set of uh, uh, brushes. So let's go ahead and ground you. Yeah. And um, maybe I'm going to have one that kind of uh, gets more paint. Um, comes off from the side. So laying it on the side, the point and first down and then up. Point and first down and then up, and the point and first down and then up. So he's going to come right off the side. This guy, he's coming from from right off the page, and the rest of the flower is off there somewhere. Down and up. Okay, there we go. Let's fill that in a little bit. Okay, maybe one more down here, huh? Yeah. Okay, down and up, and fill it in. All right. Look, we just made a bigger flower. Who knew? Who knew? You never know until they, they just express themselves. Um, so he's kind of sneaking in there and, um, 
Let me show you a little bit up close what that big one is doing. He's doing a kind of cool thing that watercolor does. He's pulling his own colors on the inside. Doesn't it look like a bunch of um, um, jellyfish that are all like swimming in synchronicity somehow? Isn't that pretty? I just think it's really pretty. <laughs> okay, you can have a lot of fun with this stuff. Um, okay. So that was the angle brush. And there are more things you can do with angle brushes, but we're just, we're just having basic... Uh, fun, easy steps, nothing too heavy, just playing. All right, now this little guy, he's like a flat brush with sort of a blunt end, okay? So he's kind of a little blunt-ended guy. Um, I think he may be called a filbert, something about, I think, they, I think he's a filbert. Don't quote me on that, he may or may not be. Um, so let me, let me put a little more purple in here, a little more water. You wanna start with a wet brush. Then add your paint. Okay, now let's see what I can do with this guy. Where will you take us? Where will you take us? Okay, <laughs> I got like three lights in the way. Okay, um, I, I'm just gonna do a simple flower form with him and just see what we get. Well, I'm gonna start with one petal. Let's just do one petal. All right, we're gonna look at that. So that's gonna give me my dimension of my flower. Okay, okay. But maybe I want this guy to go higher and maybe come down this way. And I have to change hands. That's, that's like kind of tricky because of my space constraint here. So I'm, I'm painting left-handed. This is really, I'm, this is out there. Let me tell you. Okay. And there we go. All right, so this guy, let's give him a little hat. And I'm gonna put the hat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the flat of the filbert, I'm gonna turn it on its side to the, to the blade, and I'm gonna use the blade to give him a little spigot. Maybe these will be like those little things, you know, those things, he looks, he's looking like a um, blackberry to me right now. Yeah, okay, we'll just give him that blackberry look. And I think he has to have a friend. He looks like he wants another blackberry friend. So let's just go ahead and give him another one. This one here. And it's okay if they overlap and touch a little bit. It's all right. They don't, all the petals don't have to be exactly together either. You don't have to get locked in into everything has to touch. No, things can be separated a little bit. And white space is a good thing. So you can create your little blackberry this way. Turn. Okay, and maybe we want a few of those at the top with the blade. Okay, so maybe we're gonna come down here. Whoop. Go lightly with the blade edge. And you're making your stems. Don't even have to change paint. You can keep it all one color theme. Or you can change and have some fun that way too. Um, all right, so that was a um, number four. Flat, I believe that's a filbert. I hope I hope that's right. I'm sorry, I'm not up on all my watercolor terms and everything. I just like to play with the paint and the and the brushes and the paper. So here we go. Here is this guy. This is a bigger, better filbert, I think, or a flat brush. This, maybe this is a flat brush. You know what? This is a filbert because it's slightly rounded on the edge. Now it's all coming back. This is a flat brush, which has a sharp cut across the top. You see the difference? Yeah, okay, so this guy, he has more of a soft, rounded end. So um, this guy's Flatteroo. So let's let's see what we can do with Flatteroo. Okay, here we go. Maybe some more blue. Blue, 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 blue. I love that dark blue, purple, indigo kind of color. I think it's a really neat color. Um, all right, so let's, let's just have some fun with this guy. Um, let us maybe put you here. And now I can do some like this, the longer tallers, the roundy roos, the facing sideways, uh, the jagged, but let's, maybe let's try something different. Let's, let's try this. I don't know what this is gonna do. I'm taking the flat end, the blade, and I am going to do, uh, well, it kind of looks like that guy, I know, but I'm actually going for a round flower. Maybe like a, a dandelion. Hmm? A blow away dandelion in the wind kind of flower. Why? Because we can, and we have a lot of different brushes to play with. So we can, we have a lot of different brush ends. 
Okay, and um, there we go. So I'm not connecting all at the center. I'm just going to leave it as is and leave it looking wispy and and uh, that kind of thing. So let's give him a little stemmeroo. There we go. Uh, so you see how the whole page is just starting to fill in and there's no rules with this. You can put in as many of these as you like, as few of these as you like. I've got two more brushes, so let me just complete the mission and play with these in full throttle. And um, there is, I'm going to, um, the company has given me uh, this set of brushes to use and to try out. And they've also given me a code to give you 10% off. So if you use the code outpost, and I'll put the link below, um, you, you can get 10% off these specific brushes. So if you, if you like these with what I'm using, you can use these or you can use other brushes that you have, whatever you like. Um, the whole concept is let the brush do the work for you. So this one is an even bigger flat brush. So let's see how I can make a flat brush look really different from the one I just did. All right. Uh, okay. Let's do something here. Can you see the bottom of the page? Nope. There. Okay. Right. Uh, we got that. Now I think I'm going to do a constructed thing where these are sort of all related. Okay. I think these are going to end up looking like the jellyfish, but, but more flat tops. And that's how it happened on my last painting. I don't know. They're all different, right? They're all different. And this almost be like a, uh, a bush hedge, a bush hedge. What's a bush hedge? Nobody knows. Um, like a cluster of flowers at the bottom. Okay. So let's say we just have a bunch of those, um, there that's because they're in the foreground. They're close. And let me just zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what's happening with the paint. You see that how the paint is being pulled down into, uh, the other area. Now it's starting to look like the, the, um, jellyfish. Kind of cool. Uh, a million one things that you can do with your paintbrushes and your paint. You don't need a lot of paint and you can have a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Let me just put some very subtle little, they have tiny stems. They're very delicate. Um, and I encourage you to try this, especially if you're telling yourself, I'm not an artist. I don't, I can't do that. I, I was not born with the gene. I don't, I'm not a watercolorist. Don't, don't take me there, Pam. I was fine with the paper. Get, get away from the paint. I, I want you to um, consider it as a possibility, as a medium. Um, don't think of it as uh, something that you have to be highly skilled at in order to have fun with it or to bring it and incorporate it into your, your junk journals. Um, just think about um, like, what about long um, side pockets for your junk journal? Wouldn't that be pretty? That would be very pretty. Um, so yeah, there's a million and one things that you can do with these. Uh, so here's that example. And we've got one more brush. So let me go ahead and rinse in the dirty and then in the clean. Put it over there. And then we've got one more. And this is a small flat brush, I believe, I think. But it is a number three, if you're curious. And... I have a funny feeling I have some more craftamos in my collection just by chance that I just happen to have some. Um, and I was really happy with them. So, so I feel, feel good about uh, letting you guys, guys know about these. So um, let us go ahead and maybe I want to leave a little white space in the area, but maybe I want to do a little fill in. Like maybe I'm going to take some of the paint out a little bit. And maybe these are going to be like, flowers in the background, flowers in the background that you can't really see. Um, they're there though. There's like maybe, whoops, I need more water. Okay. Watery little, I don't know, dots of uh, little tiny flowers in the background. And, and maybe they have stems. Maybe some do, maybe some don't. Can you even see that on camera? Um, it's just like a subtle background fill of wispy flowers in the meadow, unbeknownst kinds, um, ill discerned, but very beautiful in their own right. And they, and they bring presence and um, they bring um, depth to the field of your work. All right, that was dark. Okay, you're a little darker. And you got a little darker there too. Okay, you're all right. It's okay. 
Why do I? Why am I talking to them that way? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> so um, there, we're kind of filling in the background space a little bit, and then. Um, you can also do grass. This is my last brush, so I'm just going to have fun with this last brush. What other things that we can do? We can do grasses. So if you want to maybe load up your brush with whatever paint you still have. See, you're, it doesn't take much paint to do a lot of painting with brushes. So um, um, we can just do some light grasses coming from the sides, maybe. Different thicknesses. And they're just kind of wasping up into the area. And then maybe there's some grasses coming from the bottom here that are filling in the bottom space grounding everything a little bit using a flick maneuver very easy anybody can flick i'm going along the sharp point of the blade and and as if it was a butter knife and i'm like this i'm like this actually and then i'm flick 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 that's the maneuver oh it's so handy i had that butter knife here all right and then Separate little clumps unto themselves sometimes looks more realistic, although none of this has to look realistic because it is uh, from the imagination. So there you go. And if you're really feeling brave and crazy and you want to fill it in a little bit more, you can come in. Here's where you make a big mess. Here, uh, you come in and you get a little paint on your brush and you do the old flickeroo and you put some. These are like pollen drops or raindrops. It can be whatever drops you want to call them. But they're great to fill in um, some background, some white space, just to give it a little bit more dimension where you don't have to go in with your watercolor and fill in every little area. But you can let your paint and your paintbrush do the heavy lifting for you. Now you want to make sure that you don't have good clothes on right now because this stuff tends to go everywhere. And um, right now probably Sunny is uh, covered in spots, but that's okay. That's okay. And uh, I don't know if you see, are these showing up that much for you? Let me see. Okay, I think you can see them now. And uh, you can do different colored spots, but I think I'm just going to stick with the mono, like, bi bichromotone, I guess, two-tone, two-tone um, of this painting, the blue and the purple, and uh, just the different flowers. So if you just want to have fun with a piece of paper one day and you don't know what to do, you're like, I don't know what to put in my journal. I want to make it a little more personal. Um, I might want to try some things I haven't tried yet, but I'm not committed to, to go ahead and, you know, do a whole lot of stuff. But, you know, maybe, maybe I could try some simple flowers with simple painting. And uh, this is about as simple as it gets. So um, I hope you had fun here. I hope you... Um, uh, like I said, I'm going to put that um, link down below so you can get 10% off these. And I got the air edition. I think they have air and water. And there might be four, like four elements. But it's a, these are eco-friendly, happy, no animals were um, hurt in making these. These are um, synthetic brushes. Um, they hold together very well and they feel like um, paint brushes with uh, animal hair. They really do. So um, you want to have some fun with that and make some cool things for your junk journals? I say go for it and play and don't be shy and you just uh, plop and twist those brushes around and then rinse them all out when you're done and uh, let them air dry and uh, you can reform them too if you want. Like after you're done with your brush you just kind of give it the old the finger smoosh back into its original shape and then it'll dry very nicely for you. So there you go folks. Um, if, you, if you find value here please like, subscribe and share and click the notification bell um, to uh, find out when I put out my videos which come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, I have a, an Etsy shop with vintage digital kits and uh, when I make them sometimes some journals and uh, bundles. I have a newsletter that is free you get a free digital image every month and so with some other cool things. And I have a podcast, which is also free to listen to, um, which comes out Tuesdays and Thursdays and everything related to junk journals and paper craft and all sorts of fun. And a Facebook group, which is um, a great place to show me what you're making. Um, we do weekly and monthly challenges there. A lot are based on the videos that I do. And you can show me how you took it and ran with it and just did so many amazing things. Um, or if you're just starting out and you're, you're getting brave and trying things, um, I say go for it. Have some fun. And and um, we'll go from there. So take care, everyone. You have an awesome day. Remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. Bye.